HMSA stands for Hawaii Medical Service Association. We are the Blue Cross Blue Shield plan for the state of Hawaii. So there, there was a confluence of, of business drivers. One was PC Levels wanted to use devices that I didn't typically support on our network infrastructure. The second was, I don't want to do another desktop refresh. How can I avoid it? Virtualization seemed to be the cornerstone of solving both problems. I saw what a lot of other people were doing wrong, at least in my estimation, with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, it was wrong. And that was that they would go to their server teams and stood up virtual servers and said, here, now go build me a desktop farm. Well, what we learned in the early going was the I.O. profiles on a desktop are radically different from the I.O. profiles on a server. So we said, okay, let's try to avoid that mistake. We intend to launch a full BYOD initiative in 2014. And the only reason it's out that far is I spent a lot of money in 2008, 2009 to field a bunch of desktops and laptops. I want to let that depreciation expense kind of start to run out. And then we'll start standing up all of that VDI infrastructure that we need to support BYOD. My take on it was for the average user, perception is reality. So what we wanted to do was get perceived performance of a virtual at least to the level of its corresponding physical that we had in place today. So we achieved that end. We've even got to the point where perceptibly the virtuals are running faster. And the fact that VMware builds all of the things that it does internally means that we'll get a more consistent user interface, more consistent interoperability. I don't want to be solving those other weird problems while I'm trying to solve the VDI problem. So let's go with Vue as one coach and whole. We could go back to the server team and say, hey, we need some help. You guys are experts on ESX and leverage our total institutional memory on that product set with that vendor. So after we did the, the testing and presented some of the different costs to our management, uh, they concurred with our decision to move forward with you. Our expectation in the end state is that it will be company-wide. The driver for Helio and Fusion IO uh, is less for, is for us less around cost and more around performance. That is the big win for us. The combination of Linus Helio and Fusion IO has delivered that performance to the extent that we believe that we now have something that once we get the first few users out there, there will be others who will start beating down our door. To be included in the early parts of the project. To all my colleagues out there who are thinking about it and afraid to do it, come on in, the water's fine. It's fine. So in our current infrastructure, our hosts, uh, we do have Fusion I.O. cards locally installed in there. So we're trying to remove as much dependence from shared storage or, or SAM, as we call it. The Fusion I.O. cards, they're the 1.2 terabyte uh, PCI memory cards. And we're doing on each host in Ilio appliance.
And so our base images are all 40 gigs um, standard. Uh, we can add additional drives as needed for specific VM pools or specific needs. Outside of that, user data is being right now redirected uh, using AppSense. And we're keeping that centralized. So a lot of the shared storage cost that Stuart had mentioned before with regards to uh, reclaiming some SAN space. We're going to front end that and we're going to keep that for user storage, but all the system VM decays or all the system files for our VMs will be residing on local. Yeah, roughly I'm getting anywhere between 85 and 90 percent DDU. We have tested the fast home and it's about 10 seconds per. What we actually publish or verbalize to users is you know, a thousand aisles on your desktop, guaranteed. Um, I have hit 20,000 aisles.